So we're here. You all right, man? Uh oh, I Hello? can't. Yeah, uh oh, can you hear me now? Sorry, my fault. Can you hear me? Now? Uh, I can. I can hear you. Okay, great. No, I I had to go to another room. I got I got the book because you know when you talk, I gotta write stuff down. Oh, you know. I, uh, <laughs> you, you take me too seriously. Uh, yeah, you're right. right? You're absolutely I, um, right. You know, you're absolutely right. I, you're right. I take you too. I'm taking you too seriously. And guess what? I don't actually take a whole lot of people on this planet too seriously. So you and you and you and rare company. Let's put it that way. Uh, well, I tell you, brother, I am. I am at this stage in my life. I realize that. What the Africans say, which I heard in passing several times in my lifetime, that boys do not become men until they're over 60 years old. Ah, ah yeah, we talked about that. We, we, you know, and I, I think, think I there's some truth in that. And I'm trying to, to speak as a boy who is trying my best to arrive at my manhood. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, Grayson. Go back for a second. The American Indians. Now, you you in America, darn it. You ain't in the world. You ain't in Africa. You in America. And I, I agree. You, I agree. And, I, I, and you know what, brother? All of us African Americans can claim the bloodline of the people who actually preceded what is accepted as the Native Americans, who are actually the blended versions of the, um, uh, the Native people who were here. In other words, the people who are accepted by the order of disorder, in other words, the white elite ruling group and their minions, these people who are accepted as Native Americans are the ones that they have miscegenated with. Exactly. No, we, we know that. But let me get to this other point. In, in, in some, in some uh, nations, they say a man doesn't become a man until he's 52 years old. That's generous. Yeah, I know it's generous, but I like that number because five and two is seven. And I, I sort of like that, you know, so but 60 is all right, because I say I say the other the other after you, I say between 52 and 64 is when you have your last gasp of, of uh, how you say boyhood, if you want to put it that way. But definitely when you're 64, you get to be an elder. So so we are we on the yeah. same page. You know, we're on the same page. But let me tell you what. Let me tell you what I called you and what upset me. I told you before, uh, 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 Cornell West has decided to, um, you know, do something with Joe. I don't know, um, uh, endorse, whatever, support. I don't know, vote for, excuse me, Joe Biden. But when when I heard that, when I saw the the the, the little blur, he's gonna he's gonna sell Joe Biden to the, the African American community. Okay, there you go. So when when when, you, when I heard that, the first thing I thought of is when you said, and I wrote this down. It's right here, man. I'm looking at it right now. Intellectual servant class, the intellectual servant class. I got it written right down the intellectual servant class. And, and That's my your brother, words. My brother, they are they are all colors. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's why it's yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother, there are some of us in the African American community who actually compete for that position. We cut each other down to be accepted in that role to Massa. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I got you. I got you. But, you know, I, I, look, Cornell is Cornell. I want to hear, I want to hear what Adolf Reed has to say about what Cornell West just said. I, I, I gotta ah, look that up. Now, now you're, you're, you're looking for sparks, brother. No, no, I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I know we all looking for a fight. I understand that, but this, <laughs> remember, I didn't say a fight, brother. No, 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 come on now. You know when you're a kid, you 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 know you get in a fight, and all of a sudden they say fight, <laughs> then the whole project turns <laughs> out. You know, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm saying intellectual, <laughs> intellectual debate or. I don't know. I, I don't know. All I know is them sparks are going to fly. I just... All right. Man? I hear you. Man. You're not lying either. Man? 
I, I look, I don't want to say I'm, I'm not upset. I'm, you know, I, it's, it's, let me put it. I, I wrote, um, I, I, I saw the headline. I didn't even stop and read the, the post. I just went to the comments right away. And I said, eventually, or eventually they're all going to, they're all going to, going to kneel, going to kneel toady or something like that to, to the Democrat, whatever. <laughs> and it's out of fear. That's one of the reasons why I had to leave New York because I felt a palpable fear. But you said something, you said I left New York. No, I said I left it out, out of fear. And what did you say? I said that um, you obviously have been out of America too long, so much so that you actually stopped being dead and now you're alive. So when you came back to New York, you can actually feel the joint. I think you're right. But you mentioned something else. Remember, we did we did an audio drama one time. We, in fact, it was at the. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I remember what you wanted to. I, I was. I did say that um, that New York is Dead's town, and in Dead, drama. No, 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 and if and if, if there's a dead town on planet Earth, it's America. And I did say that America is the most sophisticated slave plantation on Earth. And the people who are, shall we say, are, how do you say, livestock in it or chattel are unaware of it. And what has happened is that during the lifetime of America, the the small ruling group understood they couldn't rule it by themselves. So what they did was they gave special dispensation even to the poorest European Americans, AKA whites, to be special, to get special treatment and that the, the throwaway people who they all could agree were black people were going to be put upon by the entire group of so-called white people and now the people the few who really rule now have become so confident in the ability to control all that they are saying we don't just want the black people under our thumb we want everybody outside of our elite circle of very wealthy people to be under our thumb, including the middle class whites and the poor whites. So now they've become so callous and indifferent, their conduct is what we are seeing within the framework of all the surveillance. And this has come about as a result of the extremely highly developed competence of the technology. The technology is so mature that they could control huge amounts of people with very little effort. Well, you see, Grace, let's go back to, let's go back to the play, the audio drama. We did, um, uh, Amos Tertola's uh, Palm Wine Drinker. Yes. And that's where Deadstown appear. That's right. Uh, that's where that's right. when I first, well, we first know, know, know about it. Because were you engineering on that? I, you know, you're, you're becoming... Yeah, I, was, I did the live um, engineering yeah, okay. with Michel Kako and everybody. Yeah. 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 And in that in that um Palm on Drinkard, the character sold his fear. Sold his fear. That's it. I still haven't figured that out yet. How, how, what does it mean to sell your fear? Well guess what? Let's leave that hanging. Let's leave that <laughs> no. Because you can't answer every question, and, and you know how we used to do at BAI, you, we, we, you, you, we're not going to tell you what you're going to get. We'll definitely give it to you, but we definitely, we also are definitely not going to tell you what you got. You know, you got to figure there it out for yourself. And, and you bring you to the mix too, so we can't tell you what you is. So <laughs> what you get in that mix of you with the thing that we give you is another story that we're not going to calculate. But you know, but you know Woodrow Wilson, who who uh, who everybody says that Donald Trump is is like a whatever they Mussolini Hitler, Hitler. No, Donald Trump is this era's Woodrow Wilson. I'm sorry to say, Woodrow Wilson famously said, "The business of America is business." And what do you do in business? You tell them what they're going to get, you give it to them, and then you tell them what they got. That's what's right, so unique. Now. That was so unique about BAI. We never did. Anyway, my point really is. 
you know, everybody's trying to demonize Donald Trump, whatever have you. This is, this is, yeah, you know, the last, the last I looked, and it was a couple of days ago, and it was yesterday, both the Democrats and the Republicans offer some 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 bogus information from the from the whoever they got it from the or the the the, 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 the Afghan Secret Service that they start whoever they got that Secret Service or whatever those 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 kind of people right they, they both the Democrats and Republicans voted to extend the war in Afghanistan. This wasn't Donald Trump. Donald Trump wanted to end it. I'm not speaking right, for Donald now. Trump. You know what I mean? Because Woodrow right Wood, Wood, Wood Wilson said that he 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 politicked on 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 not not getting to any war, and all, all the meantime he was dude arming both sides because this is about who's getting the money and who who gets what's the most money that's gotten from arms that you don't use, arms that you don't have to use from this fair, from leaving some money here and then somebody says, "Well, oh, that money's for so and so," and then then they spread that rumor and it's. I don't say the stupid politicians. They quite they're quite intelligent. They know what they're doing. It goes back to those people you just been talking about. They're doing the bidding of some some people, and they like doing that bidding. They like having their cognac and their cigars or whatever they they're doing. You know, I don't know what they do. We're Brother, not of that class. I, I I'm looking at this thing, and when I look at our dear President Trump. I realize that he has become the scapegoat for a lot of things. Thank you. And whether we like it or not, one thing you can say, what I perceive in President Trump, he has functioned as the great revealer. Oh, that's true. He has allowed us to see things about our society, about the vaunted places of authority and stability and where uh, rightness is pursued and equity is the hallmark of their function. These trusted environments have been brought to light as not trustworthy, as having as many biases in them politically and otherwise as any other unsound institution in this country. And so what it has allowed us to see that a lot of our trusted institutions are heavily biased and unprincipled. And instead of us saying, hey, you know what? This Department of State should not have these biases within it. And we must see to it that they're corrected. What we do is we hear the report. Who's going to correct them? We hear the report. And I'm talking about the citizens now. Because before we could say we didn't know. But when these things are brought to light by the great revealer, and we have to face the fact that these institutions that we thought were principled have turned out to be biased and unprincipled, we should at least have the decency as citizens who believe in democracy and equity to say, you know what, this institution is a critical institution, and we can't have it be as biased as it has shown itself to be. This is something we have to insist well, well, you know, be corrected. Well, good. We did not say that. What we do is we quickly ignore that bad news that we got, and we talk about the President Trump's hairdo. We talk about Orange Man. We talk about all kinds of things. So in other words, well, we're more focused on the man than correcting the ills in our society well, that have been I want to leave the man life. alone for a second, because you said something about these institutions. Again, you know, Sometimes I read a lot, and what I what I what happens is I just I forget stuff. I just read it and keep on going. But there is this thing I came across. I forget. I think it's called a fourth wave, and the fourth wave is basically the fourth wave of, of losing faith in your society. And the fourth wave is the one you lose faith, total faith in your institutions. Now remember, since two thousand eight, well, but since long before that, the banking's been going. So the, the, all the institutions, people now do not have faith in. And that's the, that's the fourth wave. So this the, that fourth wave, you, you know how you're at the beach and the, every, the seventh wave is the one that's the biggest wave? Well, I yeah. insist that because America is born on the 4th of July, four is their number. So it's going to be like this is the fourth wave. And when that, when that wave crashes, that's it. Done. <laughs> you know, done. Prepare yourself. But, but, but I, don't want, I, I, want to, I want to go to something else right now, if you don't mind. Talking about done, prepare yourself. Now you was you was telling me something about uh, uh, I want to say a spiritual, but, but an experience that you had 
because we all have um, we have we all have the capacity to read each other's um, um, let's call it electromagnetic fields. I don't know what else. Ah, to call it. Ah, but, but 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 ah. you know, you was taking. I do I do qigong every morning. Not not the whole qigong. Just I do this. I do certain exercises and qigong. I so I, I do that. I do a little bit of that. But you was, tell me about this this thing you happened with when when you was dealing with qigong because you you tried well, to do a little bit too. Um, I, I um. Just before my my um my last child was born, I was coming out of this, having fallen into the rabbit hole, I call it. And believe me, my brother, I spent a lot of years as an engineer, being very level-headed, rational, mathematical, logical, <laughs> and I I always seek an explanation, a reasonable explanation for things that I observe. And even as a child, I did this. And uh, there were things in my family, you know, that I got the impression there was some, there was some stuff there, but nobody talked about it. And so what happened was that I was in a situation where I came out of my house one day and I encountered a gentleman and I was talking to him and as I was talking to him I realized that I could finish his sentences but he wasn't a, a rich guy and he was just an ordinary person like oh, myself. Hold on, hold on. When you say you can finish his sentence, isn't that like a New York thing? We talk over each other, we almost finish each other. No, 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 no. I, I could actually... I could actually see word for word what he was going to say. Hmm. And I could have said it, but something inside of me said, don't do that, Grayson. It would be disrespectful. Hmm. Hmm. And so I, I didn't do it. Hmm. And I listened to him. And I realized that the words that I thought he would say, he actually said them. And I was even tempted to say, I knew you were going to say that, but I didn't say that either. Yes. And another time, I think it was in the same day, because this all happened in one day, and because I came out of my house, and I felt like electricity running through my body. Hmm. And I didn't understand it, and I thought it was something I ate, something I did. Anyway, I, I met this other person, and um, something happened, and he lost something, but he didn't realize he lost it. And so what I did was I realized that I could just keep it and he wouldn't be none the wiser and I would be, you know, better off for having taken it. But I didn't see that this as an option because I, it wasn't, I, my spirit didn't take to that at all. But the thought came into my mind and it just passed through. And I, anyway, I took the item and I got his attention and I gave it back to him and the item was so important that he was extremely grateful mm -hmm. that I had basically been so you know humane. honest basically well no humane I, you're, you're, you're as a universal human being which we, yeah. which we don't have we, we don't have on this planet but so what he did was I could see in his eyes his gratitude and I could see that he sent a thought into the into into like into space into the he sent out a thought mm -hmm. and I felt the thought but I didn't know what it was and what was interesting was I walked down the block some more and as I walked down the block I encountered another gentleman in the neighborhood and the, I live in a mixed neighborhood, and in this neighborhood, people from different cultural groups don't trust each other, mm. and they generally give each other the cold shoulder. Mm. And so when I met this guy from the same cultural group as the guy I was helpful to, mm -hmm. when I met him and we, we crossed paths, his energy that he sent out to me was like extremely friendly 
And then I realized from that moment that people are tied together as a group. And that when you help one person, a member of that group is messaged. And if not one, all of them get the message. And so what happened is that when you encounter another member of that group, you will get a response in keeping with your deed or mis your good deed or your misdeed to the person that you encountered. So in other words, it's almost as though everything you do has a consequence by the within the framework of the group, group it's been done to because it sends out a ripple. And I noted that, and I didn't bother to pay attention to it. I was just, oh, okay. So I just left it. Mm. And during that same day, I heard this lady on the radio, and she was giving a Qigong class. Mm. And I went to the Qigong class. Something said, you have to go to this lady. So it was two of them, a Chinese lady and a Japanese lady. And they were talking about their the class that we're going to give the following week. And that, I went. That's on you. That's, I would say, well, that's a sort of unusual Chinese and, 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 and Japanese getting together. Okay. Yes. And I thought that was unusual too. And I went. And when I went, I did the first class. And when I did the first exercise in the class, it hit me. It says, I know this stuff. Mm. This stuff is as old as dirt. No, it's as old as your, well, yes, it's, but it's also as old as your lineage, and your lineage goes back to the dirt. I don't know how far back, but it goes back very far. Very far, brother. So what happened was, the second class I did, the first class was reinforced and confirmed. And then they did a third class, I think. And then after the third class, they did um, a master class on the weekend, mm -hmm. which I went to. And when I went to the master class, I was like, oh my goodness, this stuff is disguised African culture. It's the dirt. And what? Huh? It's the dirt. The dirt. It's the dirt. It's the dirt. You know, one tree on one continent can talk to another tree on another continent. Go ahead. I'm Brother, when I did this thing, all of the moves, brother, it came to me that every move had a meaning. And then after a while, my, my body, my mouth started to say what the movements meant. Each gesture, movement of my arms, my body my mouth would explain what it meant. And I did not have a thought in my head, brother man. Not a thought. Mm. And my ears were just eavesdropping on what my mouth was saying. Mm. And I have to tell you, after this happened, something changed. It's like a channel opened up full force. Because I had this Chinese friend of mine that because I worked in a music conservatory, a lot of musicians and stuff. And I had this Chinese lady who always used to talk to me. She would come looking for me. And she'd always say to me, oh, poor Grayson, his heart chakra is open. And I didn't understand what she was talking about because I didn't know anything about any of this stuff. And then after I went through this whole thing with the Qigong and whatnot, then I started to get little glimmers and the pieces started to come together. And then what happened was that something else happened. I found out that I I couldn't touch people. When I, you know, you have to be cordial in America and you shake hands. You shake hands with somebody and you can't say no because you seem disrespectful and might be taken as an insult. It's yeah, rude. So, <laughs> so what I did was I would shake their hands even though somebody said, don't touch this person, don't touch them. And I would still shake their hands. And brother... Every person I shook their hands, it was like electricity would run down my arm and it would run through my whole body. And for each person, that electrical 
like tingling, it's like tingling rather. It's like, you know, like when you hit your funny bone, mm-hmm. that feeling is what would run through my body. Uh-huh, the funny and thing. I couldn't stop it. Mm. And it would always stop in different parts of my body, sometimes in my ankle, in my knees, sometimes in my pelvic area, some in my stomach, in my left side of my body, my heart. I mean, it would be stopping my head in one side of my head and the other. It would go around to the other arm. And it was intense where it would stop by itself. And I started to wonder, is my body telling me what's wrong with that other person's body? And I used to wonder, but I never said anything. Mm. And what would happen was that I could listen to people talking. And when they would talk, I would be able to read their whole lives just through their voice. And that shit frightened me, brother. It frightened the Jesus out of me. I went to doctors to try to understand what was wrong. Because uh-huh. this were, was more than I could handle. You, 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 went, you, not, you, you went to Western doctors to figure out what a, what, what a universal uh, uh, principle was happening to you? you know, I, I, brother, it, I, I don't know how to describe it. Because this is something I was not prepared for. I didn't understand. I couldn't stop. And it... It had a life of its own, and I started to, to when I listened to music, I could hear the same rhythm in all of the music, no matter where it came from, and I realized that this was an old, old, old um, thing that is, it runs like a thread through every form of music on planet Earth. It's mathematics, man. It's numbers. It's mathematics. Yo, and man. I, I heard this, 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 this universal song, and then what happened was that it made me dance. I couldn't stop dancing. I, I'm not a person to dance. I do not dance. I have two left feet. And I just started dancing. And sometimes I just couldn't stop myself. I would dance, sometimes even in public, even though I try not to. And sometimes, every now and again, people say, oh my God, you're a very good dancer. Mm. And I would be shocked because me and dance together, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, this went on. And then I started to... um, Get out of myself. I, I would, I would, I would just be outside of myself, mm. and these voices would come into my body, and they would talk, and I would be listening to them, and they would be talking about me, and say to, about me that I had no guides, and one of them would said that it was a woman, it was a man and a woman, and the woman said that she has protected me all my life and that I have had no guides. And and I was like, wow. And I'm listening to this, you know. And brother, I'm listening to this. And during this whole thing, I had a, um, um, there was um, a Caribbean Day Festival, which we always cover. And I had to go out there during and then the early part of my experience to set up the sound. Out there and so it was the, the, the Park, Caribbean yeah. Day Carnival. And yeah. I went out there. Mm-hmm. And when I went out there that day, I couldn't talk. I could not talk. I just did signs and grunts maybe, but gestures and I and all the engineers, Errol Maitland and everybody, which was which, the controls or the, the system that I put together, and how to operate it. And then I left, and I did all this without talking, and I wondered how could I do it, because I realized I couldn't talk when I left home in the morning at 4 a.m. But anyway, I did it, and I left, and I walked down the block. And when I walked down the block, you know, they have all these African vendors with food and, you know, like um, African arts and whatnot. And there were two stores, a whole bunch of them, but I went into two of them. I went in the first one and I walked around. And then I came out of that one and I went into the adjacent one and I walked around. And when I walked around, I was led to three masks, which I picked out. I don't know if I picked them out or these masks picked me. 
and I took up three masks. And when I took up three masks, I brought them home. I paid for them. It was a whole thing to get them because when I tried to buy them, I couldn't talk. And the guy said, $100. And I shook my head. And he said, $100. And he insisted. And I said, no. I shook my head again. And then, after a long time, he said, okay, okay, $60. And I shook my head. And I gave him the $60 I had in my pocket, which was exact change. And so I took the, 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 the mess. And he, he started to, like... Um, like bend down and like talk to me because he realized I wasn't talking and he started to like tease and cajole and and like taunt and he was taunting me and I couldn't talk and then all of a sudden I heard this voice come out of my body and it says I know you in a very hoarse voice and then all of a sudden, the, the African man who owned the store, who was the proprietor, he started laughing and, and, and bending down and, and get, becoming even more taunting. And then he said, who, who, who am I, who am I, who am I? And then the voice in me said, you are a trickster. And when, it, when the voice in me said, you're a trickster, and there's the only things that the voice in me said for the whole day. He, he started laughing and, and guffawing and jumping up and down. And then he said, he said, he said, you have something, you have something, you have to call me, you have to call me. And he took the, the, the packaging paper that he wrapped the mask in and wrote down his number and insisted that I call him, but I didn't say anything. And I had this quiet thought in my mind that says, don't call him, because if whatever is come into you, has found you in America, it will be your guide and it will lead you to. You don't need anybody. Well, did so you, I just uh, quietly thought that I, and I never called him. Yeah, well, that's 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 a, that's a whole Allegba thing. The question was, was he Allegba uh, talking to you to try to suck you in or was he calling you Allegba? That's kind of interesting. But the other thing, I would say this, you know, you know, one of my sayings when you get my email, you know, I follow no one and I seek no followers. That's <laughs> That's 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 all it is, you know. So look, <laughs> I tell you, the other thing that happened to me that struck me was I saw my my last child before he was born, and I didn't know he was my child. And in the dream, I went to to hold him, mm. and in the dream, he ran away from me. And I didn't think much of it because I didn't realize that he was my child. And in the dream, they have these African carvings where, you know, you have an African figure holding itself in his hand. Mm -hmm. In the dream, I saw an African figure holding itself. And I, I don't remember the dream exactly, but I know... The, the African symbol was the being was holding itself in its hand. Mm -hmm. And I've seen carvings like that in, um, in many African uh, arts shops. You know, like this guy, um, Narabingi, had a, a store in, in 42nd Street next to where one of the places where I worked. And he used to always call me Ba, Ba, Ba this, Ba that, you know. And I would go see him, we'd sit, and he'd smoke his big splits and, and talk, and I, I wasn't smoking, so I would just listen to him. And he'd tell me all about his, how he went to Africa. He was an African, he took all the African art and brought it here. And when he brought it here, the Museum of Natural History came and took all his carvings and said, you can't sell this, we're taking it. So they took a lot of his art. And he said, these were original art. And he said, I regret bringing this art out of Africa because these white people stole, stole most of it from him. Well, there you go. Isn't that the story? You know, the people don't understand. The white people didn't actually steal. Well, the white people stole black people out of Africa, but they stole it from Africans who were holding those, those black people. We won't get into all that right, right now. But look... <laughs> Listen, Brother, look, man. we have a lot of work to do. 
but we 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 we're gonna have to postpone this work. Not post. We're gonna we we always working, but I need to talk to you again. You know, sometime. I do the same thing, you know, we, we need to talk. I need to, see, I have this whole thing now, man. I'm talking about, extra, you know, I, I know a lot of extraordinary people on the planet. And I was talking to one of my, one of my guys in, uh, in Cape Town, Shepi Mati, who's a, who's a, he's a, a struggle for, for real guy. He's just a comrade for real. And he was saying right now with the COVID and everything like that, there's a lot of, there's a lot of comrades, you know, the, 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 there, were, there were student leaders back in, back in the bad old days of apartheid that are dying, you know? And he's saying he's trying to get them to write stuff down. I'm trying to say, I keep on saying the same thing. It, it drives me crazy. The reason why I started my YouTube channel is because people wasn't doing what they supposed to do. And as I was getting older, I said, look, I'm telling everybody to, to, to talk to the elders, whatever have you. I'm becoming an elder. I better start just talking, just talking, getting the stuff out there. So, you better do that. And I, I tell you, that, I tell you, brother, let me put it to you this way. The tape recorder is our friend well, and we should record each other and validate what, each other's lives that's what i'm trying to do that's that's i started with just me but now i'm trying to talk to some other people man you know and and i just have to do this I'm, uh, you know rodney uh, you have, yeah you know rodney black i've been talking yeah, to rodney yeah. every week I'm, I'm trying to talk to um to, to, to john kane i'm talking to you i told Sheppy, you know he needs to get those comrades yeah they can write but but to talk into some sort of machine at the same time or something because you know you can go from speech to text you know these days so you know people got to start doing it you know it's 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 a, ah, anyway well Wait. i would okay. to that i would say that everybody i talk to they accuse me well i guess i could say it that way of needing to um Right, and they accuse me of saying important things, and I, I don't know. I just say what I feel in the moment, and every person I talk to, what when I talk to them, I say what comes into my spirit based on the what they bring out of me, and and it turns out that in my life, a lot of people have told me that I've they've accused me of telling them things they needed to hear, and I'm like. What the hell did I say? And sometimes they come back 10 years later and tell me this. And I say, I'm always talking shit. What the hell did I say now? Mm. And they would tell me, and I would not be able to recall a thing. I'm, I'm laughing because I do this, the same thing happens to me. They say, you know, they say, you know, Anthony, you, you told me this years ago and I didn't listen, but now I realize I'm going like, oh, yeah, sure, that's great. <laughs> so what, you know? <laughs> it doesn't do anybody any good, you know? Anyway, yes. look, look, man, we, I, I got to sign off, you know, I'm munching on some food my my, my friend here made, you know, because he's, 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 well, he's not actually a vegetarian, but every once in a while does a vegetarian meal like you. This is a vegetarian little dish I'm Well, yeah. Right um, I, I agree that um, you should at least be allowed to eat one meat product because... I realized at one point I, my body was so unaccustomed to eating any flesh ah. that I had I was planning to go to Taiwan to to you know Asia with mm. my son because he was in a choir that was going there to sing mm. and I had to prepare to travel and I thought to myself I said you know Grayson you're not going to get the food you want to eat everywhere you go so you should at least be hospitable enough to be able to at least eat fish. Fish. So what I did was I tried to teach my body to eat fish after about 20 something years of not eating any meat at all. No flesh. No man. eggs, no chicken, mm. no dairy, no, no milk, mm. no cheese, just plants I ate for over 20 something years. And I realized that when I started to eat fish, it would give me such severe cramps that I thought I would die. And I, it took me like more than a year to teach myself to take a piece of fish and put it in my mouth and not get severe cramps in my stomach. Well, look, man, that's that's one of the decisions I made a long time ago. I'm ba I basically was trying to vegetarian. I sometimes been vegan, but I always said, look, man, if you're going to travel, you got to at least every once in a while, you know, eat, eat something, eat something, you know, eat some, eat, eat some, yeah. eat, eat some, you know eat, eat some you know eyes, you know. And I, I do a lot of pescatarian things, but but it's it's true. You know, you, your your body will crave. What you crave, but you understand, you—it's—it's it's a cyclical thing. So, yeah, 
Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't get any cravings. Um, I don't know why I don't get cravings, mm. and I don't think people always ask me, "What's your favorite food?" And I, I can't think of a favorite food. You don't get cravings because uh, you're disciplined. That's why. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. If it has anything to do with discipline, brother. Really. It, it. I don't know what it is, but what I would tell you is, you remember Bert? Yeah, yeah. Bert came to me one day when we were at Five Hundred Five Eighth Avenue, mm. and he says, "You know, I've always watched you." Mm. He said, "Are you um?" Do you meditate? Mm. I said, well, I used to. Then he said, um, do you eat meat? I said, well, I don't. He said, well, he said, you know, you have to be careful because when your body is too clean, it's not good for you. Not on this planet. <laughs> and he told me that. And, and it took me about many more years before I realized what he was saying yeah. and how valuable it was. And then I, that's when I, um, you know, when my last child was born, the one that I dreamt about before he was born, and I learned in dreams that dreams are opposite to real life. Because I, I had a dream, one of many, where in the dream, I dreamt I, I won money. And the next day, after the dream, I was mugged and I had my rent money in my pocket and I lost all of my rent money. Mm. Um, and it was a little more than 600 bucks. And, and I thought, well, my God, I dreamt the night before that I would, would find money. And in the real life, it was just the opposite of my dream. Mm. So in the dream, my son ran away from me. Huh. And in real life, he came to me. And I had to take care of him for the first six years of his life mm. by myself mm. and it wasn't easy and the cops came after me the um the the city came after me because they said that somebody called up the cops called the city on me it's um child welfare department or whatever they call them yeah, yeah. and I, I was taking care of my kid by myself i had a lot of trouble raising my child and and the people call cops on me in the street with me taking my son to daycare because they thought, um, I don't know what they thought, but they, the cops they, came after me. They thought you your son was stolen or <laughs> whatever? Yeah, they, and, and they accused uh. me of um, taking advantage of his mother and all kinds of things. And I was like, wow. Well, look, I don't, I, I look. I, I know part of it, so I don't want I don't want you to get too personal. Being black in America is fucking not easy. Well, you know, I, I hear that all the time, but I, my my thing is, it's not supposed to be easy. Why do you think you came down as a black man? <laughs> but what to have a, to have a, a, the easy time? What what is this? I just don't no, I, I no, don't no, get it. No, I no, really no. don't get it. No, I, no, I I'm came serious down about to this. Live like everybody else. No, 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 no. Because if you live like everybody else, that means you want equality. Black men have never been equal. They've always been, here we go, I don't want to say this word because other people use this word. They, I don't want to say that word. I say that they've always been something else. You see? <laughs> not equal. Not, not equal, not, un, not, 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 not below, not above, but something else. It's what I call, let me, let me hold it. Hold this, hold this thought. Think about this. There's a thing I call a third infinity. Now, as you know, if you if you take an hourglass on the, and put it on the side, you know, like 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 the infinity sign, you know, one end is basically the past. That's the past is infinite. Then you yeah. have the then you have the future, which is infinite. We live in this this little tiny thing right in the middle. I call it the third infinity. It's so infinite you can't even you can't exist in it. But yet we still we exist in it. And I'm saying that I'm saying to you that that that, that black people especially they live in the third infinity. And the black people that don't want to live in the third infinity, they end up they're trying to dwell themselves in the past or dreaming about some future when they they need yes. to be right here because this reality is what we're supposed to be dealing with. We are we are the riders of that fourth wave. We are the riders of that first wave, that second wave, that third wave, that fourth wave, that sixth. That's the seventh wave is when it's going to happen. You understand? So well, anyway, I, I, let, me, let me not go off on this because I really believe in the third infinity. But that's I, it. I, I hear you, brother, and you're absolutely right. And what I would say is that I've come to a place in my life where I am grateful for the blackness, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I have to tell you, brother, 
it feels good to live in the blackness. Okay, man. Let's end it there. I'll check you. All right.